Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rose Jeffrey, and subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our video. Rick Pitino said what? The longtime college basketball head coach and current St. John's head coach just went unhinged the other day in his post-game press conference after St. John's lost to the Seton Hall Pirates. I'm going to go over what Rick Pitino said and how it affects his current basketball squad, potentially his future of coaching college basketball and the college basketball landscape as a whole. Now, Rick Pitino is doubling down on what he said the other day, saying that he wants his St. John's players to hear my words. And I understand that when things are not going the way you want them to, a coach has the right to be able to say what he wants to say about what's going on with his program. But Rick Pitino absolutely lost it the other day. These are some of the statements that he said. Somebody commented on Twitter saying, I cannot imagine being a hostile school basketball player, reading these quotes and choosing to play for Rick Pitino over literally any other scholarship offer. Pitino said, to be honest with you, I'm just getting ready for Georgetown because Georgetown could definitely beat us, which there's nothing really wrong with that, saying that your team is playing so poorly that anybody can beat you. But the way he worded that, it could have been worded a little bit better. Then he says, do we have terrible facilities. Yes, we do, but we're doing something about that. Now, that statement is a little bit different because that's not even about his team. He's going out there saying that the facilities for St. John's University and their athletics department and basketball are terrible, but Rick Pitino's the one that took the job. He knew what he was getting into when St. John's offered him the job. He could have stayed at Iona and not had to deal with St. John's bad facilities, and I'm sure St. John's facilities are much better than Iona's in college basketball, but I guess compared to other teams in the Big probably like UConn and Villanova. Yeah, St. John's is probably behind. They haven't been a good basketball program since Luke Carsoneska back in the 80s. So I'm sure St. John's probably is lacking in some areas. But yet again, Rick Pitino is the one that took the job. He didn't have to take the St. John's job. And then he said here, it's not the job. You could be at Missouri and recruit slow players. Believe me, it's not St. John's. We had to put together a team at the last second. We will never, ever do that again. And that's where it kind of goes into college basketball as a whole because the transfer portal era has changed college basketball and college football forever. Being able to just recruit an entire new team like never before, it makes it great when you're taking a new head coaching job like Rick Pitino did at St. John's. They basically had to put together an entire new team after Mike Anderson got fired because a lot of their players did decide to leave. But the thing is, is that even though bringing in a lot of transfers is great and sometimes it can work out, we've seen it programs like Arkansas this year with with Eric Musselman, who's had success at the Razorbacks. This season, it's not working out because all of those transfers aren't meshing together. Look at Indiana. They brought in some transfers. It's not working out either, and it's not working out at St. John's because St. John's, look at all these players that he brought in. There are a total of 10 transfer portal players that St. John's brought on their roster, and that is also not including the two high school players that St. John's brought in. So there's only one returning guy from last season's St. John's team, and that's their center, Joel Soriano. Every other player that Rick Pitino brought in is a transfer or a freshman. And you can't expect much from freshmen. Brady Dunlap was only a three-star recruit and Simeon Wilcher was a four-star recruit. So yes, they are somewhat talented guys, but you can't expect them to fix the program. And a lot of these transfers are from smaller schools. Cruz Davis is from Iona. Dennis Jenkins is from Iona. In total, Rick Pitino brought in three guys from Iona where he was previously coaching. So they're from smaller schools. Jordan Dingles from Penn, yes, he's a guy that can fill it up. But if you look at St. John's roster as a whole, Jordan Dingles only averaging 10 points per game, and he is a guy that averaged a lot more at Penn last season. I kind of look at Jordan Dingle, and he reminds me of a Khalif Battle, a guy that could fill it up at Temple. But now that he's at Arkansas in a bigger conference, he's struggling to score as much. Dennis Jenkins is the only guy from Iona having a lot of success. But a lot of these other dudes are not having as much success. Chris Leadlam, he's only averaging 9 points per game and seven boards. He was much better at Harvard last year, and Chris Leadlam was committed to Tennessee in the transfer portal, but he decided to decommit and go to St. John's, and that's where people are having an issue with what Rick Pitino said because of the fact Rick Pitino brought in these players. He brought in the guys that he currently has on his team, and then when Rick Pitino says a statement like this, look, Joel's slow laterally. He's not the fast one on the court. Chris Leadlam is slow laterally. Sean Conway's slow laterally. Brady's physically weak. Drizza is slow laterally. The issue with that statement 
statement is that Rick Pitino was in control of who he brought in. I will give Rick Pitino a little bit of credit because, yes, being a first-year head coach at a new school and when he was hired, some of these other schools had a leg up in the transfer portal because they could already recruit these guys before Rick Pitino could really get going because he had to start a little bit later in getting guys through the portal. But still, this is a absolutely horrible statement by Rick Pitino. You cannot bash your team this hard, especially when you are responsible for all of these guys coming in to your program. I will say that Rick Pitino did say he knew it was going to be a difficult year. I'm hoping we could finish over 500 for the season. So he is resonating that he knew this was going to be tough, and they are struggling. They're 14 and 12 and 6 and 9 in the Big East. But I do believe that Rick Pitino did go a little bit over the top on what he has said. He has a right to say whatever he wants. And what a lot of people are leaving out when talking about this situation is that Rick Pitino is 71 years old. He has been coaching college basketball for a very long time. He has had so much success as a head coach. His all-time record is fantastic at 725 and 302. He actually has some more wins because some of them were vacated. But he is a really great head coach. I'm not saying anything about Rick Pitino's head coaching ability. But with him being as old as he is, he's used to college basketball being the way it was before the NIL era and the transfer portal era. And that kind of begs the question, if Rick Pitino does not like this new age of college basketball, kind of like we've seen with Jay Wright and Nick Saban and a lot of these other coaches retiring lately in college athletics, why did Rick Pitino take this job? If he does not like the current state of college basketball, he should have stayed at Iona where it was a smaller school. His guys would have never left because even the guys that he brought over to St. John's, most of those guys probably would have stayed at Iona. They're not going to be making the jump to a bigger school if Rick Pitino didn't leave and then they followed him. So Rick Pitino, him saying this stuff that he's saying right now kind of leads you to believe that maybe he won't be coaching that much longer. And Rick Pitino did say in his post-game presser that he has no regrets taking the job. Take a listen. Do you have any second thoughts of taking this job? No, not at all. It's not St. John's. It's my team. So you heard it from Rick Pitino. He has no regrets taking the job. He's saying it's not St. John's, even though we trashed the facilities. He's saying it's his players. But like I said, that is a bad look because you're trashing the guys that you brought in. Rick Pitino should not have gone as far as he did on trashing his team. But Rick Pitino is an older guy. He has a belief system of college basketball back in the 80s and 90s. And that's why maybe in the near future he should retire. We'll have to see what ends up happening with Rick Pitino. But to defend Rick Pitino a little bit, we we do live in a world these days where people are oversensitive about everything that you say. If this was back in the 90s, no one would have cared what Rick Pitino said. They would have just shrugged it off saying, well, he just doesn't think his basketball team is very good. And because they're not, even though he brought in a lot of talent through the portal, and even though there were some guys like Jordan Dingle and Glenn Taylor Jr. that were really expected to fill it up and that this St. John's team would make the tournament, they're just not doing it. It is very tough to mesh a college basketball team together. And St. John's basically had a completely new roster that Rick Pitino was having to work with in year one. It's very tough while a lot of these other programs only had to plug in a transfer or two like UConn. So that's why St. John's is struggling. I don't think Rick Pitino is at a point in his career where he can't coach anymore. I still think he's a fantastic coach. I respect his college basketball knowledge, but I know a lot of people don't like Rick Pitino, especially after the way the Louisville tenure ended. And this just adds fuel to the fire with what he is saying now at St. John's. It makes Rick Pitino look bad, even though I think people are taking his statements out of context context and they're blowing it out of proportion. He still shouldn't have said the things that he said. So we'll have to see if Rick Pitino in the next couple years, maybe in the last couple years of his college basketball coaching career, that he can turn around St. John's. I hope he does, but he's going to have to probably tone back some of his comments if he wants to be able to continue to recruit at a high level. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But that is definitely one of the craziest press conferences that any coach has had so far in this college basketball season, and we're not even done yet. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below about what Rick Pitino said about a St. John's team and whether you think that Rick Pitino was in the right to say what he said or whether you think that he should have toned back some of the statements that he said and if you think that he can turn around St. John's in the future in the next couple years subscribe to the channel if you like sports content like this video down below follow me on Twitter as well link is in the description and I'll see you next time